Welcome back to Counterculture, where we talk about things that are counterculture. Or we just talk, and that's counterculture. Right, anyway. right, right. Uh, listen, okay. we're the Christmas story. I, most people know, if you listen to my sermons, you know, I'm, I, I try really hard to give people the reality of Christmas, not what we've created. Um, and that's not to say that other people don't. I'm just, I, I tend to look at the Christmas story a little bit different than most people. Right. And th this year I've challenged people and I've actually said to our church, I've said, listen, I'm praying that God wreaks havoc in your Christmas. <laughs> right. And so a couple people came up to me after last <laughs> week and they said, well, that explains a whole bunch. And I'm like, oh, really? And they started telling me a story. I'm like, yes. Right. I, I, I pray that God is wreaking havoc in the people of my church and their traditions and their things that they're just thinking about what they're doing and why they're doing it. But Specifically in the Christmas story, I've challenged people this this year to really think about really truly which part of the Christmas story do you want to to play a role in? What like if you had to swap out, what would you what would you want to be? And and the reality is when I start talking to people, they, they start telling me they want to be the shepherds. And I said, so so really, you want to be ceremonially unclean people who make everywhere they go unclean. That's what you want to do, right? Because Again, just showing up with, with Mary and Joseph and, and that whole thing made all of them unclean. So that, that's what you want to be, right? And, and he said, oh, no, you don't want to be that, right? You want to be the innkeeper? What, what part of it do you want to be? But something interesting came out uh, this year. I was reading about Mary, and, and it says that Mary uh, went up into the hills, right? And I started looking at this story, and I said, wait. I wonder if Mary, if she ran to a city of refuge, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Old Testament, there were at least six cities that were set aside, three on the east side, three on the west side of the Jordan, right. that if you got in trouble, if you, you accidentally killed somebody, you know, yeah. and did all these kind of things, you could go to the city of refuge. and you Sanctuary would cities. Exactly. And so I, I, I started looking up some research, and lo and behold... Uh, one of the alas, ones. alas, you discovered something. I love that. Alas, now what a great word. Alas, alas, I discovered something. Go it ahead. Like the light bulb went off. Go ahead. Uh, it, one of the places that it says that Elizabeth may have lived was in Hebron, which is indeed a city of refuge, a sanctuary city. Okay. So I was thinking about this Christmas time, and I was just thinking about people who need to run to a city of refuge, to a sanctuary city. We talk about it all the time in our culture today. Wait, are you a sanctuary safe place city? Or are a you a safe place? Exactly. Yeah. And so my question to you as we, we think about counterculture, it, it's it's funny. The enemy constantly takes the things of the Bible, twists them and gets them, you know, all turned around. But God God ordained and alas, deemed some cities as refuge cities, mm -hmm. sanctuary cities. Is there still a need for that this Christmas time and this in our culture today from the Christian community? Is, is it necessary for some people to be able to have a place that they can run to that is a refuge, a city? Like, Again, they may have done wrong things. I'm not talking about people who, who didn't do wrong things, but maybe some people right. who did some wrong things. Uh, are there some safe places that they can run this Christmas? Do we have a need for that? Should we be thinking about that uh, really in our own context? Yes. I don't... Uh, I'm... I don't know that they necessarily are cities. Mm -hmm. They are places. Amen. Amen. So let, let's clarify that. Our, and, you know, you're a pastor, so you know this. There's Pastors do not always have safe places to go. No, they do not. Very few. Um, very few. And very few. There's also sometimes very few people that they can go to who are safe places. Yes. I have been in situations with other pastors, and even in today's culture, you know, I, I, I have experienced it myself and other pastors that I just don't know who I can trust. Yep. My political yep. views may not be the same, but it gets to that. We can get into discussions on that. Theological views sometimes is, oh, what do you mean you don't believe in this or that or the other thing? So 
So, so I think we have to define, and I think it's important as we were to go back to the Old Testament. What was a refuge? Refuge city. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was a place where you could go. They could not. They could not do anything to you. Yep. Yep. Uh, they couldn't just take you out and stone you without... It was a place for them to say, okay, let's sort this out. Exactly. Didn't mean that they weren't going to sort it, it out. It doesn't mean, didn't mean you were off the hook. Mm-hmm. It meant they're going to get to the bottom of it. They're going to straighten out the mess. Yeah, exactly. And figure it out. And so before, it was a safe place for you to go so that you wouldn't get a, you know a, a mob come after you and we'll just take care of this right now. So the question I think maybe that we need to ask, mm. if, if a, it isn't sanctuary cities mm-hmm. or refuge cities, cities of refuge, but places of refuge. Which, by the way, is what Mary did, right? She yeah, went she went to, to Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Rather, yeah, who, rather, who kind rather, of understood what was going on. Yep. Which also, now, now let's think about this. I, my mind just went to a, a theological or a spiritual perspective. Sometimes there are some people that it's not safe to talk theology with. Exactly. As you and I have talked about there. So mm-hmm. two plus two equals four. That's all there is to it. I'm not. Don't ask me to change my theology because I like it. Well... <sighs> Uh, and then there's some of us that we, we need to... Get, James Fowler talked about that in Stages of Faith. Yep, yep. Uh, many people stop, as I call it, at 2 plus 2 equals 4. And then then when they bump into, wait a minute, uh, there, there's something wrong here with the math. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure what to do. With it. Well, I'm just going to resort to two plus, it's, it's it, 2 plus 2 equals 4, no matter what. Instead of saying, wait a minute, let me wrestle through this. Let me work out my salvation in fear mm-hmm. and trembling. Yeah. Yep. And so sometimes that safe place needs to be that that refugee city, that sanctuary place. Let's put it that way. Um, is it a place where I can just say, I'm thinking about this or I need to work this out? Or you know what? I, I Not to go to a place of gossip and say, Andy, you know, I need to talk to you about this. Issue. There's there's a place for processing. Yep. Yep. And then it, then we got to be careful that it can cross over to be gossip. Yep. Andy, I, you know, this person did this. I don't think they meant it this way, but help me work through it. That's yep. what counselors for. It's what pastor is supposed to be for. But how many people have gone to a pastor and the pastor said, well, you shouldn't fail that way. And then yep. they feel worse than they did before. Uh, I, I, I said this Sunday mm-hmm. in my sermon. You know, I said, don't, I, I've told you before, don't tell your kids or grandkids. Now, if you behave, you're going to go see the pastor. Yep. I said, you know, I don't want kids to be afraid to come see their pastor exactly. when they need to see the pastor. But I exactly. said, you know what? This one hit me. I said, but for some of you adults, maybe you need to go see the pastor. You know, and they're quiet, you know, and a couple of them laugh. They got what I'm saying. You know, if you're going to send the kids to see, isn't it funny how we, we tell kids, you, know, you guys, you go tell them you're sorry, but yet as adults, we, you know, we get into a tiff with someone at church that so that never happens. So we, this time then we say, well, no, you guys can stay mad at each other. No, we go use, straighten it out. We use Santa isn't coming for the kids if they're bad during Christmas. Yeah, time. yeah, we yeah. Don't really apply that to ourselves. No, no, it stops somewhere. Yeah, the yeah. age of accountability. There is, <laughs> wow, a, wow. there is a topic for us. Whoa. So I think the point is, I think that the important thing for us is we may not always know. In, in the, your, let's, let's go back to your context of the refugee cities of refuge. Mm-hmm. You, it might have been for murder or stealing or whatever the case sure. was. That it, what we're not, you and I are not saying that. Okay, go to your pastor and and or to your church and yep. and you will not you'll avoid arrest or anything like that. No, 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 we no, don't no. have that kind of power. Nor should we. Nor should we. I don't want that kind of power. But can can we be a place that when you're going through a bad time, hopefully your pastor, hopefully your church is safe enough that. That you know what? Yeah, I know I've messed up, but but I I just need. There's a reason we yeah. call it the sanctuary. They call them worship centers now sometimes, but it, it's supposed to be a place of that we can go to meet with God and and experience some at least for a momentary peace. Yes. Uh, to say okay, here yes here's where I'm at. Uh, you know to be able to go to God and say yeah I, I messed up, which we don't have to go to. The sanctuary to do that. We mess up, we should just take care of it. Yep, just, my friend Marion Battle says, you know, when you mess up, fess up, just take care of it. So, I, I in regards to that, I think, you know, Mary going, she went to Elizabeth. She was a safe place to land. 
and, and to have that that we can go theologically can i you know we, we're drash ministries down here it's supposed to be not trash ministry it's supposed to be mm-hmm. trash mm-hmm. Ministry, but sometimes we get talk in theology and yep. it can turn into a trash session yep. if we're not careful instead of saying how interesting here's my position and we matters. do not do that well in our culture that's something my wife and i have tried to teach people uh, uh, couples dealing with marriage problem, uh, issues uh, learning to listen this is my position this is my position this is my position and this might acknowledge your position learning to help people say okay listen yep before yep. you give some bad in a marriage situation and my wife and i have learned this you know I, I i need to talk to you okay about something is it about me no but i need to just process something okay do you need me to listen just to listen so you can get it out or do you need me listen yeah for a, a solution because as men mm-hmm. we have a tendency to want to fix it right yep. okay i will tell you sometimes that goes the other way too sometimes my wife wants to fix it and that's okay it's because you care about the person it helps me as a husband if she says i just need you to sit here and listen i need a sounding board okay i can do that i don't have to really think about a solution i got enough other problems i'm trying yeah. to solve but if she says i'd like your opinion on it okay now that changes the way i'm going to listen but I need to be that safe place, that place of refuge that. that at the end of the day, and this is in ministry, but it's, it should be in marriages. Imagine how marriages would change if we were safe place. I, I saw this Instagram clip the other day. I think it was from The Bachelor or something. And this, and she's crying and boohoo, and he goes, you never pay it. You know, you always interrupt me and stuff. And she starts boohooing all the more. And then he tries talking to her and she goes, She's booing all the more, and she, she, I can't do this. He goes, there you go. You just interrupted me. You know, it's like you totally miss it. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, so to be that place mm. of refuge, to be, to be Elizabeth's. Yep. Yep. We, you know, Merry Christmas, M A Y R. But how about Elizabeth Christmas? What if we had an Elizabeth Christmas, where we were a safe place, mm. no judgments. No fixing, praying for people, loving on people and saying, I, I, I don't agree with what you did, don't but I love to. you. But I love you, you know. This is a refuge, not for what you did. Right. But for you. Yes. Right. That makes it, I like that, an Elizabeth yeah. Christmas. An Elizabeth Christmas. Fantastic. Guess what we're preaching Sunday? An Elizabeth Christmas. Right there. Boom. Got it. Got it. Hey, you preach it as well. Think about it. Uh, Pastor Mark's giving you a whole bunch of stuff right there to think about. Is your home, are you you. a Elizabeth refuge for somebody this Christmas? Amen. That's a What a gift. What a gift to someone. I love it. I love it. We'll see you next time. Counter culture.